I don't know how many times you all have been in a situation, maybe at a restaurant, uh, maybe at a doctor's office, uh, maybe talking to a friend over dinner, maybe talking to a neighbor, and the discussion has come up about how difficult life has become. Maybe it's a brokenness over a child. Maybe it's a brokenness over finances. Uh, Maybe it's a job that someone has lost and they don't know what they're going to do next. Maybe it's some other form of life that's just messed up. And I'm just wondering, when that comes up, how will you answer? I want to give you one particular scenario that might help you, hopefully, when we're done, to have a little bit better idea of what you might say. Yes, I realized that the deadline was last night. I hear you. Okay, I'm so sorry. Life has just been, it's just been hectic lately. I know, I know it was last night. Could you just please give me an extension for just one more night? One more day even. Okay, okay, I'll get it in tonight. Midnight. Yes, sir. I got it. Okay, I, I've got to run. I've got an interview with a pastor. He's got some kind of event set up. I'm covering for Julie, and I just got to go. Okay, okay, tonight, midnight, I've got it. All right. Yes, sir. Bye. Hi, Dr. Ellison. Uh, Caroline. Yes. You just call me Johnny. Okay, Johnny. Fine. Nice to meet you. I'm with the Macon Telegraph. Excellent. Excellent. Have a seat. Okay. Have a seat. I don't really, I haven't got any service yet. I don't really know if they are going to bring us. Um, I have a couple of bowls of ice cream ordered for, oh, for later. Oh, perfect. So I thought, thought that would. Cookies uh, and cream, right? Uh, no doubt. Well, two, three different kinds. We can get whichever you like. I'll, I'll eat the rest. Oh, uh, I think I'll take care of that for you. All right. Let me. How's your day? It sounds like you're a little frazzled. Oh. Oh, Lord knows that I had a deadline last night, and I didn't meet it because just so much is happening right now, and I just, I'm behind in work, and I'm trying for this promotion, and I know they're not going to hire me for it if I can't get my stuff in on time. Oh, uh, well, you never know what a day holds. Oh. Just, sometimes things you weren't expecting. Come I know. On. Okay, so it is good to meet you. Julie, I know she was one who was supposed to come in and interview you. She spoke very highly of you, um, but she had something come up, and so sorry okay. you're stuck she with me. She texted me and said that okay. you would be coming, so I Perfect. figured that's probably pretty good. Um, so, okay, let's get started. Um, so, you are the pastor at Green Acres, is that correct? That's right. Okay, that's right. and you're located in Warner Robins? That's right, yeah. Been, been there a while. The people love me okay. a lot. So. Okay. So, not only does Julie speak highly of uh, you, but you speak highly of yourself. All right. Well, it just, I just try to speak the truth. Yeah, so. Okay. That's what my father says. Yeah. All right. Um, so, tell me a little bit more about this event. Um, I have here, it's for the first responders. First responders, firemen, uh, policemen, deputies, EMTs, people who are, you know, typically the first people to the most dangerous events that we have. Uh, We just, we feel like as a church, it's an opportunity to just bless them, the people who step in. When when we're, when people are running away from dangerous situations, they're running to it. And we, so we want to take a, a, a Sunday, especially a Sunday close to, in America, what is typically recognize as kind of a first responders time of the year, September the 11th. It, uh, it'll actually be September the 10th is the Sunday, but it's close to September the 11th. And it, it's a reminder of that, that awful event back in, in uh, when the towers were knocked down mm. in New York City. So. People sure do uh, flock to the churches to, for September 11th, almost like Easter and Christmas these days. <laughs> this is true. Sometimes that, that happens. That, All no right. Doubt, no doubt. So it starts at 1030. Is that correct? That's correct. And could you just give me a rundown of what to, they could expect of the service? It, it'll be a pretty typical worship service, to be honest with you. Um, but we'll be able to acknowledge them and recognize them in the service. Afterwards, we're going to host a special luncheon for the first responders and their families. Um, and we want to we serve them. We've got a gift bag for them, wow. uh, which, you know, if people want to assist with that or, or volunteer, um, they can, they can and help with that, they can. I'll put that in the article. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right, so what um, inspired you to host this special event? Um, one of the things that the Bible speaks of is uh, servants uh, being important. And I guess as you look out across our community, there are a lot of people who serve, but our first responders are some of the most visible. And in many cases, they, they don't have the best paying jobs. They don't necessarily always get a lot of 
a claim. And in fact, oftentimes the first responders get attention when something goes wrong and they get that attention. And so we wanted to take a time to recognize them when nothing's wrong. We mm. wanted to let them know what we believe is right about what they do. Um, so how long has Green Acres been hosting this type of event? This will be our third year uh, annual event. And then, you know, with the, with the regular worship service, we'll have a special speaker, uh, a gentleman who's a friend of mine. He's the chaplain for the Gwinnett County uh, Fire and Police Department. has been there for 25 years, a gentleman named uh, Dr. Larry Wynn, and he'll be preaching that day and maybe share some of the experiences he's had through the years as a chaplain. Larry Wynn, spell Wynn for me. W-Y-N-N. All right, didn't want to put that in there wrong. Right, All right, so, um, so who exactly is invited? Is it just um, the firefighters? I know you spoke of several different ones. Are there families invited or just them? Families are certainly work? invited. We've asked okay. them to RSVP if they would like to come to the luncheon afterwards. Now, just to come to the service, anybody can come. Okay. If they want to come to the luncheon afterwards, we ask them to let us know, just so we'll have numbers on how much food to make and the gift bags for them. That, that thing. Okay. Um, now, some people say, you know, churches use these kind of events as a publicity stunt um, to get people into their church. Can mm -hmm. you elaborate on that? Uh, exactly. That's exactly what we do. Um, <laughs> we, we, see, Caroline, we have a message. Uh, we personally believe it's the most important message on earth. And so the more people who can hear it, then from our perspective, that's important. Now, on the outside looking in, some people might think, well, that's uh, kind of working people or doing a sales pitch. I don't know exactly what people always think. I do know this. The more people that we can have here to hear what we believe is the most important message, not only because it deals with life here on earth, but because it deals with eternity. Uh, we believe that's important. So the more people to hear it, the better we believe that is. Yeah, you see, I didn't want to take this interview. Um, I grew up in church. I've heard all of it. But sure. um, about a year ago, my sister, um, my older sister, was actually killed in a car accident. Um, uh, and uh, there was a drunk driver involved. And long story short, um, the drunk driver lived. My sister uh, didn't. Wow. That's hard. And, to, um, it's kind of hard to stomach. I, so this whole, this whole stuff right here, I just, I just don't get it. I just don't understand why... Um, I guess you could say it's cliche, but why do such terrible things happen yeah. to good people? One of the things that we, we've never tried to hide as a church, or I think we've never tried to hide, is we just we live in a very broken world. And um, I, don't, I don't know kind of what your church experience was. And I've talked to a lot of people who say that, who say, you know, I've, I've heard it all. And, and oftentimes, even after they say that, when I explain maybe what, what we believe is the most important message, oftentimes they'll come back and say, wow, I've never heard it explained that way. Um, we just, we live in a very broken, messed up world. And I don't, I, I'll tell you, the, the, the best way for me to explain it, and this may be something you want to put in the article, now if you don't mind, I'd like to sketch it out for you if that, if that could be of help. Possibly. I got all the time in the world, just this, an article due at midnight. Okay, I got this blank piece of paper I keep in my pocket all the time, so. I can use that um, to explain it. See, um, it, what, what I want to do is give you a visual of what okay. we believe is the most important message that began with, and I'm going to use these circles okay. for, for, to explain it. The first circle that I'm going to draw, <clears throat> I'm going to write God's design inside of it because uh, in Genesis chapter 1, and this is what we believe, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 31 God had made all of nature, all of the universe, and people. <clears throat> and at the end of it, he said, this is very good. It's the only time he uses very good in all of creation. It includes all of the universe and plus us people. Everything was perfect. Relationships were perfect. And he intended it to be that way. And some might say that sounds kind of far-fetched. Yeah, it really is. Um, but because we believe God's capable of anything, we believe he's perfectly capable of that. And so what happened along the way is something we might, I'll make a bigger circle because it's a bigger word, brokenness. Brokenness has set in. And um, we look around the world right now and we see people who are in pain, uh, much like your sister. But there, for every situation like your sister, you know, there are a hundred more people who have sometimes died uh, and they were good people and had no reason. And other times they've done bad things and they've died and other, taken others with them. Sometimes we see terrorists. 
the first responders, if you think back to 9-11, a lot of good people died who all they did was go to work that day, right? It's, it's an awful thing. And so in the midst of brokenness, um, someone might say, well, okay, so if this was God's design, how do we get over here to the circle of brokenness? Well, we get over with, I'm going to draw an arrow okay. to represent that. And that arrow, I'm going to write the word sin. Uh, good definition for sin is anything we do say or think that just displeases God. Mm. That covers a lot, <laughs> a lot of stuff. And in the Bible, in the book of Romans, it says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So when I'm talking about sin, Caroline, I'm not just talking about you. And you might say, well, you're a preacher. You don't sin. No, I'm talking about me. Anybody that you meet at some point has sinned, and that separated them from God and caused them caused us to be broken. Um, it, also in the book of Romans, it tells us that the wages of sin is death. You know, what do we earn for sin? Death. But God's gifted us with eternal life. Except, sometimes people try to cure their brokenness. I'm going to draw a little squiggly arrows out to the side. Maybe with um, drugs, right? Uh, some, sometimes, believe it or not, people try to cover up their brokenness or the gaps in their life with, with work kind of workaholics at, at time. Um, uh, so, sometimes people use human relationships to cover up the, the gap they have in their life. And they're trying to, to fix this brokenness. And really they find they can't. And, and so um, what we try to explain to them is there is something called, and this is the third circle, called the gospel. The gospel is a word that simply means good news. There's some good news uh, that, that allows us to have hope of overcoming brokenness. And in order to get from brokenness to the gospel, it requires another arrow. <laughs> and I'm going to write repent. I'm going to write confess. Uh, I'm, I'm going to even write turn, which is another word for repent. This just means we turn to the gospel, which is God. Mm -hmm. And God says because uh, he sent his son Jesus Christ to earth to live a sinless life and to die on the cross and was resurrected. I know that's a lot of information, but you said you kind of heard all that stuff. Well, basically what that does, that allows us, according to Romans, if we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord, believe in our heart, God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. Here's what some people maybe don't know. Uh, this, this gospel, this salvation, this eternal life is not something we might get. It's something we can know that we have. We don't have to wonder. And so uh, once we've turned to Christ, once we've turned to God through the gospel of Jesus Christ, then he begins to do this in our lives. Restore. Ultimately, one day, we will be move back through the gospel, through Christ, to God's design. So the, the, the restoration is not an immediate thing. The, the gospel is immediate. The forgiveness of our sins, deals with the sin issue here, is immediate. But then day in and day out, uh, week in and week out, he begins to restore us, ultimately perfectly back to himself. And that's where we get to life after this earth. It's not that this life becomes perfect. It's that we have a perfect God to walk us through this life. And then after this life, he promises us we'll be with him forever in perfection. So I know all, all these elements are probably things you heard growing up. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they've ever been put together like this in, in this way. Mm -hmm. um, but does all that kind of make sense? I mean... A little bit. I, I'm, I'm caught up on the, the... I got the gospel. My sister... Talk about faithful Christian. My sister was in church every time the doors were open, loved her neighbor, raised her kids to go to church. Just, But, but yet, her life just seemed so broken because of all the bad things that were going on. Right. You know, um, issues with her work, issues with her, um, with her children and their school. And then she was killed. And I just don't understand why somebody would want to get to this point. Because even when you get to this point, the bad things still happen. Mm -hmm. um, would you agree that, that bad things happen to people who aren't Christians? Yes. Um, and bad things happen to people who are Christians. Right. There's, a, there's a, an enormous difference in that what I've experienced in my life 
is some of the some of the negative things, sickness, death of loved ones, hurt, some of these things that happen to me are the same things that happen to people I know of who aren't Christians or aren't no don't know God. But the one thing I've experienced is a God who I know is faithful and has walked me through them. So um, I don't really have to turn to my work or drugs or relationship or alcohol or any of that stuff. I've got a God who kind of fills the gap. And so my life's far from perfect. I still face a lot of the things because we live in a broken world. But on this earth, I have a God who walks me through it and encourages me and strengthens me. And then after this earth, I've learned that I'm actually going to experience the only perfection any human being can ever experience after this earth. So hopefully that, I don't, again, that, that, hopefully that makes sense, whether or not that's something that you would say, oh, I embrace that. I don't know. I just know that hopefully that makes sense to you. Your logic makes sense. I get your explanation, um, but I just don't, I just can't, I just don't understand. So, I, the, the love of God, I just don't understand um, why. Right. So you kind of say at this point, okay, I, I got the information, I understand it. But you might say, I just don't think at this point I'm, I'm ready to turn and trust Christ as my Savior and, and be all in. No, I mean, my, my, other than my sister dying, I mean, I've got a great job, I've got a great family, I've got a lot of great things going for me, and, you know, I just... Without God, right? You can do this right, yeah. I mean... Well, I, I'll leave you with a, with a couple of questions. One is, so even if your life continues to be great, right, all the way up to the end, then after this earth, then what? Just, I'm just, I'll leave that with you. You don't have to answer that. Mm -hmm. Just then what, right? And, and, and the second thing is, even, even from now to the end of your life, what if, it, what if it's not going to stay perfect, which odds are it doesn't, right? Right. Um, how will you walk through those difficult times? What will carry you through them? And those are just two questions that are important. Last thing, if you don't mind, I have a, a little booklet here that, that kind of explains this, a little more information. If I, if I left it with you, would you just take a look at it again, maybe down the road? Sure, possibly? I can do that. Okay, if you would do that. Well, All right. as far as the article is concerned, do you have any more questions? I mean, I think it about, about covers it. Um, it's, she didn't give us a very big section in the newspaper. Uh -huh. um, but um, if I've got any other questions. Do you need my picture? I mean, I, 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 brought, I brought several. You brought I've a got, headshot? Yeah, I, it's head, body. I've got several different <laughs> angles. If, um, what about just uh, the, the picture icon you're using to advertise it within your church with, of the guest speaker? Oh, How that about that? doesn't have my face on it, does it? No, but I, I think that one might be a little bit more appropriate for the newspaper. Pro probably so. Probably so. Um, but if I have any other questions, can I give you a call? Sure. Um, sure do you have a business card or something? I, I do. Except I took my wallet out of my pocket to put that piece of paper in it. So. I thought you always carried you the piece what? of paper. If you have any questions, oh. call this number. That's the church's address. Okay. The number. Any other qu An email address for me is on this website. You can find it all there. Actually. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much again. You're very I really welcome. appreciate Thank it. Thank you for taking the time. All right. And uh, I'll just let you have that ice cream because I've got to um, get back to my article well, that's I, due it's tonight. A tough job, but I can probably do it. <laughs> Thank you. Nice, nice, to nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I hope as we shared, you were able to follow either on the multimedia, on your booklets. Uh, I don't know how many of you have a smartphone. Um, but if you do, you can actually download this app where all you do is swipe to the next screen to take the Three Circles a Life Conversation Guide. I have recently found this to be a very simple way to explain the gospel. I like to draw it out, but maybe you'd like to use your cell phone uh, to do it. Um, maybe uh, you'd like to grab one of these booklets. I'm not sure if there are any more left outside and take them with you. Or... Maybe you're here today and the Life Conversation Guide for the first time helped the gospel and salvation make sense to you. And I'm just wondering if that's you today. Maybe you would say, you know what, I would like to talk with someone a little more about possibly trusting Christ as my Savior. Folks, what I just explained, what you saw in the multimedia, what's in the Life Conversation Guide, that, that is the core of the gospel and what is required to us to trust Christ as our Savior. In just a moment, Pastor Micah is going to come and is going to lead us as we sing. And I'm going to pray. When I'm done praying, I'm going to have you stand.
And I'm going to invite you to do one of two or three things. Maybe it is that you have someone that you'd like to take this life conversation, God, the three circles, God, and you want to take it to them. Someone who's lost, a family member, a neighbor, a co-worker. You want to take them a life conversation, God, <clears throat> and you want to pray for them today. Maybe as we sing, you'd like to come to the altar, as we sung earlier, and pray for them by name. Why don't you do that this morning, if you would? Maybe you're here today, and you, as I explain this, you became aware that that's really never something that you've committed yourself to in your life, and today's the day for you to come and trust Christ as your Savior. Why don't you come? You know what? Maybe God's had you here at Green Acres visiting, and it's time for you to come and become a part, a member of this, this church body, and today's the day. Whatever it is God's speaking to your heart, I'm going to pray, and we're going to stand, and I want you to respond as the Lord leads. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, Lord, I pray that, Lord, you would cause us to obey you, cause us to respond in whatever way you choose. Lord, we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't you stand?